Hi everybody and welcome to a new video in the PyTorch for Audio and Music Processing series. In the previous video we saw how to build a PyTorch model and to store it. In this video we'll just continue with this initial overview of PyTorch functionalities. Specifically what we'll be doing is loading back to the model and then making inferences. So let's get started. The first thing that I want to do is to import Torch which we'll need uh, during this video and then I'll also import um, some facilities that we already built in the previous video in the train module. So we'll do from train import feed forward net and this is the class, the uh, kind of like our model class feed forward network and then we'll be importing also download MNIST datasets. So if you don't remember what we did in the previous video, we built this simple feedforward network that's able to classify different digits using the MNIST dataset. Okay, so at this point what I want to do is just start a simple script and go through all the steps that we need to implement today. So let me comment this. The first thing that we want to do is load uh, back the model. Then we'll load the validation MNIST validation dataset. Validation dataset. Then we'll get a sample from the validation dataset for inference. And finally, we'll make an inference. Great, so let's get started with the first thing, loading back the model. So first thing first, we need to reinstantiate a feedforward net object or a model object. So we'll do feedforward net and then we'll call fit forward net like this. Okay, so now we have this PyTorch model ready. So of course, what we need to do is load back the different parameters that we stored. So in order to get back the parameters, first thing we want to, yeah, load the state a dictionary that we stored in the previous video. So here I'll do state dict is equal to torch dot load and I'll pass in the path to the uh, model that we stored last time. So this is, uh, I just like added that in the working directory right now. And this is like feed forward net dot pth. So feed forward net dot pth, cool. Next thing is getting this state dictionary and loading it back into our uh, model object so into feed forward net so we'll do feed forward net dot load state dictionary and this of course is a um, facility that comes directly with pytorch and then we'll pass in the state dictionary like that okay so now we've loaded back the model the next step is that of loading the MNIST validation dataset. And for that, we'll be using this function that we defined in the previous video. So let me just quickly jump into it. So if you don't remember, this is download MNIST dataset. And here we load the MNIST uh, dataset directly from PyTorch and we download it in case we haven't yeah, download it yet. And we return both the train data component and the validation data component as a tuple. Okay. So here uh, we're not interested in the train component. So I'll just use an underscore and then here I'll cre create a val validation data variable and I'll assign it to download MNIST datasets. Okay, so here we have our validation data. The next step is to get a sample uh, from the validation data set and we'll use this sample for uh, our inference and of course when we say getting a sample it means getting both the input uh, connected with that sample as well as the target so that we can compare like the predicted value to the the target value that we actually expect okay so here we'll do an input and then um, a target Okay, and here we'll get the, where is it? Validation data and 
we'll do this. So what does this mean? Well, the validation data, so for the validation data, we take the, the first sample, so the sample at index zero, and then there we take like this index zero here, which basically indicates that at this point, we want the inputs connected to that initial sample. For the targets, or the target, because it's a single one, on the other hand, we'll do something similar. So we'll take the, the first sample, or sample at index zero, but here we'll take index one, which basically means give me back the target for that initial sample. Okay, so now we have both the input and the target for the initial sample um, in the validation data, so now we can proceed to make an inference. Okay, so for this, we'll build a new uh, function called predict, which return, uh, returns a couple of things. It returns predicted, predicted, and expected. So it returns both what we what the model actually predicted and what we expect from, uh, yeah, this target here. Okay, so we'll use this predict function and this function takes in a bunch of parameters so the first one being the the model itself then the inputs the target and finally a class mapping now what's this class mapping of course when we deal with uh, neural networks neural networks know nothing about the name of the classes that we are dealing with, right? And so they just use integers. And what we need to do afterwards is do a mapping between the integers and the classes. And so this class mapping does just that. So we'll create this as a simple list. And let me show you a simple example here. So let's assume we are dealing with a music genre classifier. So among the outputs, the different classes, we have different musical genres, like a rock or classical music. In this case, we could assume that the first index or index zero uh, is connected or is mapped onto a rock. And then the index, uh, the subsequent index, index one is mapped to classical and we can continue doing this uh, mapping like that okay now in our case with mnist all of this is a little bit overkill to be honest but i just wanted to show you this how to do like this mapping but uh, let's see how this mapping looks like for mnist well the thing is that mnist is a data set uh, which contains digits so the mapping is actually direct completely the same so at index zero uh, we have the first class, which is just zero. Of course, it's digit zero. And then at index one, we have digit, digit one, and we just continue until digit nine. So just give me a sec to uh, arrive at nine, seven, eight, and finally nine. Okay, so here we have the class mapping. We have our... Uh, predicted and expected. What remains to be done is to actually implement the predict function, which is the core of this video in the end. Okay, so let's do def predict. So we said that predict accepts a number of arguments, so the PyTorch model, then an input, a target, and a class mapping. Good. Okay, so what should we do now? Well, first of all, we should take the model and call the eval on the model. So this is a PyTorch model and eval is a method. And what eval does, you can think of it as a switch that changes how the uh, PyTorch model behaves. If we activate eval, what happens is that certain layers, like for example, dropout or batch normalization, uh, are just turned off because we don't need them in evaluation or for inference. Okay, if we want to turn on this switch once again, all we need to do is take model and apply train, this method. So you can think of this evil and train, as I said, as two switches. So you call evil 
every time you have to do evaluation or inference and then if you have to go back to train you just call train in our case we're only focusing on inference so model train doesn't really is not of any interest to us so i'll just delete it okay so you may be thinking that we are ready to make the prediction but not yet there's another little thing that we have to add here and that thing is using a context manager that comes directly with PyTorch uh, that's called NoGrad. When we use this context manager, what happens is that uh, the model doesn't calculate any gradients. And this is good when we do inference and evaluation because gradients are only needed when we are actually doing training. Let's use this context manager. So we'll do a with torch dot no grad and here we'll code all the different lines that don't need to uh, calculate gradients and of course the main one being uh, making the prediction okay so here we'll do predictions is equal to model and we'll pass the input so we'll pass the input to the model and we'll get back these predictions okay so what do these predictions look like? Well, these are a tensor object with a specific dimension. So it's a two-dimensional tensor here. The first dimension is equal to the number of samples that we are passing to the model. In our case, we only have a single input. So here we would expect one. Then the second dimension is equal to the number of classes that the model uh, tries to predict. And in our case, we have 10 classes, which are like the 10 uh, different digits. Okay, so to give you just an example of how this tensor can look like, you can think of it like this, okay? And here we could say 0 0.1, 0 0.1, I don't know, 0 0.01, just like to, to make it a little bit different. And then we'll get to the final value or to the 10th value and we'll say, yeah, okay, that's 0 0.6, remember, the sum of all of this uh, in our case is gonna be equal to one because we are using softmax. Okay, so now, out of all of these predictions, what are we actually interested in? Well, we're interested in the index that has the highest value. So that index will correspond to um, the, the class that we want to uh, predict. Okay, so now how do we get that? Well, that's not really that hard. So we'll do, uh, predicted index and we'll take the predictions at index a zero because uh, yeah we we want to take the predictions for the first and in our case only sample that we predicted and here we'll apply argmax in order to get the index with the associated with the highest value and we'll take it for axis zero. Okay, so now we have the predicted index. In our example, this would be uh, nine, so the last index. Uh, and now what we need to do is mapping this predicted index to the relative class. So how do we do that? Well, we have class mapping and we can easily do this. So we'll do predicted is equal to class mapping and we'll pass the predicted index. We need to do something similar also for target so that we can get the expe expected class. So we'll say expected is equal to class mapping and we'll pass the target which of course is a is an index okay so now we have both predicted and expected and we can return them so we'll return predicted and expected and we'll get back to the script here and as you can see predict returns both the predicted and expected now before running this let's print the results so that we get an idea of mm, the inference so here we'll say predicted is equal to predicted and then we'll say expected is equal to expected good okay so now we have all the different um components in place so let's run the script and see if it works
yeah, it seems to be working fine. So we have predicted, which is a seven, and the expected was actually a seven. So it seems like it's working quite well. Okay, good. This was all for like this video. So by now you should have um, an understanding of how to load back uh, trained and stored models and how to make inferences. So with these two initial videos, at this point, you should have a very good overview of the different parts of uh, PyCharm. So what we'll be doing from next video is focusing or zooming into data and data man manipulation and audio transformation. So stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If that's the case, leave a like. If you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comment section below or just leave them in the Sound of AI Slack community. You have the uh, sign up link in the description box below. That's all for today. Take care. Cheers for now.